you. I like how you tell us though too. Married in what we city? We were married in Santa Rosa, just up the road. We got married at Paradise Ridge Winery, which we love. Hot. Yes. It looks so much better. I told Is that better? You, man. I mean, I'm going to put you up there with Will Clark. <laughs> I got the Wi-Fi going. I, yeah, I mean, now that's just on my Galaxy. That's not even on Wi-Fi. All right, give Dad a kiss and then scram. I love, she's totally hanging in the background, though. She's listening to everything, and then she comes in and solves all the problems. Um, <laughs> okay, so when you were trying to get on, Grace told her version of us meeting. Did you hear anything? Uh -huh. A little bit. Yeah, so she goes, Dad saw the picture of you and was like, dang. And then you saw a picture of Dad, and you were like, Dang. And Dang. Then, and then you got married and had us. A couple years later, yeah. So, pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I got to meet Paul in New York uh, through Kim Wong. Love you, Kimmy. She's still one of my best friends. I'm so lucky that I actually get to work with her when I throw out all the UCSS stuff that I do. That is with Kim. And it's some of my favorite, most rewarding work that I do. And uh, she's how I met Paul. And Paul left out some stuff, at least for my reflection. Like, I came in and you came down to meet me because you heard I was there. And you tried You were shooting like... Papa Shot. I was. You were I shooting was... Papa Shot. I was shooting Papa Shot. Shocker. I was doing something with sports. And then Paul tried to be all coy. And he's like, so what are you guys doing tonight? And I, and I was like, we're going to go to dinner. Come with us. I was super like inclusive and you should come with us. And then what'd you say? Um, I'm not sure. I got some work to do. I got stuff I got going on. Blah, blah, blah. Really busy. Mom, mom, just, <laughs> mom wrote in says, remember your mother's blessing. So I know. We won't go into the, you know, into the bar and all that mom. We'll just give the, the office version. And uh, he kept coming back down the hallway. And finally, you caved and came out to dinner with us. So, yeah. So that's how we met. We met in New York. Brother Jimmy's. Brother Jimmy's in Times Square. And then Jekyll and Hyde down in the, uh, the village. Yes. And we visited so. Jekyll and Hyde on our honeymoon. Because uh -huh. we went to Spain on our honeymoon and stopped off to, in New York on our way. Because it was a special place to us. So, um Creakily asked how we met as well, but then they also asked, how long did you date before you got married? So um, I'll test your knowledge. <laughs> I'd, actually, I'd like to know if you know. I know. I know, that, I know that I know. I'm the one that knows the dates. Yeah, it's uh, you know from I know. Yeah, June 14th of 1998, <laughs> uh, got engaged on Valentine's Day 2000 and married on July 27, 2001. Three years. We're a big three-year couple. Mm -hmm. Married. We dated for three years before we got married. Married three years before we had Zach. Had Grace three years after Zach. Mm -hmm. So we we like three. We like. Three. Yeah. But right. only two kids. But that was you. I I <laughs> should have had three. Remember what I said? I didn't know that at the time when you yeah. said that. I was I was stunned. I didn't realize you wanted three. You were you were like, whoa. <laughs> It's not going to be my kid. That's what she said in the car. We went and found out what Grace was. So we had Doc, and he was two and a half or whatever. And so we get pregnant with Grace, and we go find out through the sonogram what we're having. And it's a girl. And remember, Mom was with us, and she's like, mm -hmm. I just felt done and complete when I had a boy and a girl. And so I thought I would feel that way. And I didn't, and you did. And you were like, what? You don't, I'm, I'm confused. We done. got one of each. And I'm like, I can do another one. You're like, yeah, it won't be mine. I'm yeah, like, oh, done. okay, well, we've got a problem. <laughs> yeah, we've got a problem. Um, okay, so we have some fun questions on. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, from Cindy Browning Davidson. She wants to know <laughs> who's the most competitive between the two of you. Oh, Amy, definitely. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. Her girlfriends were, we, I remember one time we were over at one of her girlfriend's house, and, and it's about midnight, one in the morning, after just hanging out with friends. This is way pre-pandemic. And one of their girlfriends had just gotten a, uh, a trampoline for their kids. 
and Amy's out there trying to do a specific move until one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. And her girlfriend turns to me and says, yeah, she's not competitive much is she?" I said, no, nope, not much because she couldn't nail the move. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mom says, let me answer. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. From the most non-competitive person on the planet, my mother. <laughs> So yeah, my mom and I are very, very different in that aspect. I am, and you know, that's funny because did you see um, Todd Harmonson wrote in and Todd is a friend of ours from way back, Paul, when we were dating, Paul was writing with Todd at the LA, uh, Paul's at the LA Times and Todd is at the Orange County Register. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still is, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's an editor, a main editor there now. Yeah, and so they were one of, uh, Todd and Michelle were one of our first friends as a married couple down, we were living in Pasadena, and Paul was working at the LA Times, and I was working at Fox Sports, and Todd wrote in, I mean, talk about a memory, he says, when playing category, category is ethnic foods, the letter <laughs> is T, should tiramisu count? I was robbed 17 years ago. I believe you because down tiramisu and argued, argued your way to correct in categories. Yeah, well, because you didn't want to give it to him. Oh, he put right? it down. He put it down. I'm I almost positive it was his, and you told him no. You said it was not an ethnic food. That's why he said he was still bitter. I feel I I don't remember it that way. I don't know, hon, because I you you got into a fight with my you got into a fight with my dad about stuff on categories. So, yeah, the, I mean, if you're looking at the common denominator here. Well, but then we also were playing <laughs> with the Wenzels, and they were, like, disgusted with you, with what you would because, put down. And but I won. Double points for. <laughs> I I'm good with words. I didn't think tiramisu was an ethnic food. I, I think there was some argument against it or, anyway, sorry, Todd. I'm real, 17 years <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Um, okay, so as everybody knows, Paul now covers the Raiders, which you've covered a multitude of sports. Some of the pictures that I put up of us were at uh, Pac Bell Park in 2000. Um, and I think the other ones at like the 2010 World Series or 2012 World Series, but um, no, Paul has covered the Raiders for a long time. So Chinese Hawaiian barbecue, I knew you would appreciate that person. Uh, Paul's thoughts on what the Raiders need to do to become an elite team in the NFL. As a former season ticket holder, we holders, we say defense and mm -hmm. be more creative on offense. What do you say? I say exactly. Um, and they need to stay healthy. I mean, they're playing the Chargers tomorrow, and they got four defensive starters that are out. And, it, again, it's a weird season for everybody with the pandemic, and, and they can't really get the treatment that they need to, but they haven't gotten the coaching that they need to as young guys. Uh, you think when they get to this level, they know how to tackle, but then you get guys like Jonathan Abram and, and Damon Arnett that are leading with their heads still and getting concussions and, and out. So, you know, coming into the season, the theme was the best ability is availability. And there's so many guys that are just not available. And that's hurting not only their personal development, but the development of this team. Um, and, and you want to say, okay, well, they get a mulligan. Well, there's 31 other teams that are facing the same situation. Right. What's different with the Raiders is they moved cities. Um, you know, the Chargers moved, the, the Rams moved, but they stayed in the same city. They moved into a new stadium, but they stayed in the same city. The Raiders moved to an entirely new city, a new state, everything else that comes with it, into what was at the time one of the hot spots for the pandemic, too. So there's just so many strange things going on off the field that on the field what they can control is just being a better defense because when they're healthy and when they're going right, they're a top 10 offense in the NFL, but you, you're starting to see it's now how bad the defense has been is starting to weigh down on the offense because it feels like it's got to score on every single possession, which you should want to do anyways. But when you feel that pressure, it, it's an entirely different animal. Yeah. The anxiety and the pressure that K-Dub just joined, put a little happy face with hearts because she's the Cupid. She should put a little cherub with an arrow. She set up. Okay, so what do you got? Uh, somebody just was trying to tell me that the Chargers moved from San Diego, which I know, but they've been in LA since 2017. Oh, uh, you're like really so. getting into this. Like you're taking this. <laughs> this is actually more about you and me, honey, than your job, but it's fine. Well, <laughs> now back to Cindy's question about competitive. <laughs> and Kata wants credit. I love that. You get credit, Kimmy. You always 
you always get credit. Okay, so from the Raiders, which is the only team Paul and I agree on. In terms of what? Grow I'm getting there. Okay. Regarding growing up being a fan of. Like we both growing grew up. up growing up. We both grew up fans of the Raiders. And other than that, don't like any of the same teams at all. And we're on polar opposite ends regarding baseball. And do you remember, hun, when I first started covering the Giants? This was pre Twitter. This was chat room. And somebody was in there saying, Amy G is a spy for the Giants. Her husband wrote a book on the Dodgers. He's a <laughs> Dodgers fan, and she's an implant. And I was so. I was so upset, like, because I was like, what? I thought this is why, you know? Uh, you grew up a Dodgers fan. And I've always mm -hmm. said, you know this, when I go and, like, talk to kids and do the book stuff and all of that, like, give them a second to say why they like this team. And there's always some connection to a family member or history or whatever. And my, you know, I grew up surrounded by Dodgers fans. But what was it that made you love the Dodgers? Well, I just where I grew up. I grew up in Barstow. I grew up in Southern California in the desert midway between Las Vegas and L.A. And and it's funny, like, I you know, I, I obviously the Dodgers were my team as a kid growing up. And, and but I also like the Angels. Um, I didn't dislike one or the other, but the Dodgers were who I liked. And, and what really was the the turning point for me. And it's funny because I could tell you right here and right now the Dodgers starting lineup from 77 and 78 and, and, and but especially 81. But um, because but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. We're, we're on the time frame here. Um, but the 81 <laughs> team really is what did it for me because all of a sudden that's when Fernando mania showed up. Fernando Valenzuela shows up and, you know, up to that point, Steve Garvey had been my hero. He was the guy that I liked the most. And then all of a sudden there's a guy up there that kind of, you know, looks like me and he speaks Spanish and he doesn't look like, uh, he looks like family members really. Mm -hmm. And you, you kind of gravitate, you kind of gravitate towards that. And, and that's where the fandom kind of came in as a kid. Now, I don't know if you've had this experience, and, and I say this, uh, you know, and a lot of other reporters um, experience this as well, but I call it kind of the Wizard of Oz effect. The worst thing you can do as a fan is to cover a team that you grew up enjoying and liking and rooting for because then you see behind the curtain and you're like, oh, no, really? That guy's that, that's a bad guy, and that guy's not really all these many. I, I don't want to see that. I want to be a fan. What? Yeah, so so oh that's God. happened. Yeah. yeah, so what's happened to me? Every single team I grew up liking as a fan, as a kid, whether it was the Dodgers, the Angels, the Lakers, the Raiders, the Rams, USC, UNLV, uh, I've covered each and every one of those teams in one way or another, and I've always kind of run into that same kind of wall. Being, uh, so it's it's best to just kind of unplug, especially when you're covering a team as a beat writer. Uh, you can't be a fan anyway. You can be a fan of the game fan of storylines but you cannot be a fan of the team per se right for sure when in your role very much so my role's always been a little bit different which has always been hard for us because mm -hmm. i get more emotionally invested in a team than you do you're really able to keep your to keep your distance and keep your perspective and you know i'm wanting like for that storyline to play out exactly how i want it to go for that person and it doesn't always happen um, but our roles are different. Somebody's asking what your role is with the Raiders. I'll, I'll help you. He does not work for the Raiders. He covers the Raiders with ESPN. That's always mm -hmm. a, a sticking point for Paul. Everybody, you know, thinks that we work for the teams and, and we don't. So you're, how would you describe your job? I'm a, I'm a beat writer. I'm, I'm a uh, multi-platform reporter for ESPN who covers the Las Vegas Raiders. And that means I'm, I'm writing stories for the website. I'm tweeting, I'm blogging. Uh, I'm going on ESPN radio. I go on local radio. I do sports center hits and or other shows just to talk about the Raiders as a reporter for ESPN. So I'm a, I'm a team specific reporter for ESPN, yes. but I also cover a little bit of everything else. Whenever it pops up, there's just not a lot of things to cover right now during the pandemic. Um, you know, I've, I've, when I was based in the Bay Area work-wise, I mean, obviously I was with you at the World Series and, and things like that. So, um, you know, or covering A's opening day or Giants home opener or or the Warriors. I did some sports center hits on the Warriors from the North Star Bar in San Francisco when they started yeah, their running. So, so it's, it's you know, the job is 
in and of itself is to cover the Raiders, but it's also to be uh, vers versatile enough to, to cover a lot of other things. So while we have to be apart right now, we've had several moments where we've been able to be together for really, really cool sport memories and moments, and the World Series was one of, one of them. And then it was the it's NLCS 2014 mm -hmm. St. Louis. Paul was actually covering the Niners, and the Giants were playing the Cardinals, and the Niners were playing the Rams. And yeah. so we were in St. Louis at the same time, at the same hotel. We each had a room. And remember, we were like, do you want to come to my room? <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's on the show. Your mom's on the show. I know. We were married. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because we were like, do you want to come to my room? Because huh? uh -huh. like, we each had our own room. It was so, But that was so much fun to be able to be there doing different things. But I think that's one of the things that has been – kind of the stability of this relationship is that we both understand what the other has to do. Um, you, especially because you, you've worked in, in baseball and you know exactly what it entails. I've done a little bit of football. I did some sideline when I was pregnant mm -hmm. with Zachary. Um, that was fun. Raiders game on the sideline, all prego. But um, I think that's a big part of why this works. We're going on our 20th year next year in uh, 2021 is an understanding of what's entailed in, in, in the industry and what's, you know, demanded of our partner. So. No, I totally agree. And, and I think that's how we've been able. Yeah. I think that's, that's how we, we've been able to make it work is because it takes a special kind of crazy to be in this industry in the first place. But when we're both in it, it's crazy times too. And yet you kind of, understand what the other person's going through so you kind of fill in and help out and you know I, I i bounce things off of you all the time you bounce things off of me and and we kind of go forward that way so it's, it's tell you i'm like hmm? you need to cut that down yeah and That's what do i do you need to add to that <laughs> <laughs> no, no, i would add this stat and i would add this i'm like mm -hmm. no i only have 20 seconds call it 20 seconds no. context you need You're context like, long, 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 long. Cut down, cut down, cut down. You're like, I have an article. Like, people get to sit down and read my stuff. <laughs> but I think that's the yin, yin and yang thing mm -hmm. that works for us. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so <laughs> Kathy Coleman, boxers or briefs? Go ahead. Do you, do you want to reveal? Is that okay? He's a straight uh, Right now, none. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see <laughs> That's why the camera's right here. <laughs> when in Vegas. Don't wear chonies? No. Uh, I got to do laundry. The chonies are in the laundry. I have some. I have some for you. They're... Are they going to be in my Christmas stocking? I mean, when you're talking. Gracie, yeah. <laughs> tell your mom to stop. Uh, oh. Paul's a, Paul is a boxer guy all the way when he decides to wear them. This is true. Yes. Mom's listening. I know. Well, then you shouldn't listen, Mom. So is Will's mom, apparently. Will's mom is what is listening, too. Will's mom, 1017. Oh, Will's mom, 1017, is listening. <laughs> <laughs> and poor Shanna. Oh, there's Robin. I see that, Paul. Oh, well, Shanna. And Robin. Hey, and my homecoming queen. My homecoming queen is on there. There she is. You're very popular. You're very popular. Oh, mom. I voted for My Amanda. My Amanda. Cool mom award. Yes, mom. He's apparently going commando. Oh, He's not. God. There's a mirror behind him. I mean, seriously. Oh, I, I stood up earlier, huh? <laughs> what did you say? I stood up earlier, too. I, there's a reflection. Yeah. Well, it's on there, and I'm going to replay it on my page. I've asked you to do a podcast with me for how long? How long? A couple of years. Oh. A couple of years. And There's legal podcast. ramifications here at play. But people are saying podcast, Con podcast. So Contractual obligation. Are they going to sponsor it? Are they going to pay us? I'll do it. Whoa. I love how you think. <laughs> I think I we need a sponsor. That's so the male-female difference right there. You're going to pay me for it? That, then I'll do it. And I'm just like, oh, wouldn't that be fun to just talk, <laughs> and talk on a podcast? I have to start thinking more like you. Yes. Um, 
I, no, I'm just throwing it out there. I wanted to do a podcast with Paul for a long time because I think as a married couple in this industry, we've got stories to boot. And the mind that we're trying to literally raise two children uh, through this that are going to be 16 and 13. So, I mean, not that that makes it special or anything, but it's, it's crazy. Times mm -hmm. are crazy. So, um, yeah, if anybody wants to sponsor us, Paul's only going to do it if he gets paid. And I'm going with that. I'm going to go along with it. And um, I'll talk to ESPN. Who do I need yeah, to should Yeah, I should have told Heather to, to log in and watch. Well, but it'll be on my page, honey. Of which, I'll let her by know. By the way, going forward, if I promote that we're going to do this, why don't you promote uh, it too? On your I, I hit retweet, and I, and I answered oh. a question with Snoop Dogg and Ice Cube and... On your Instagram page, you just have to repost. Hey, joining my super I don't know how to do that. beautiful wife. You don't know how to do it. Well, I know you're super and beautiful, but I don't. I don't know how to redo the other stuff. Um, hi, have you met your daughter? She's right here. I, I yeah, but I'm in a in an RV. I'm doing the cousin Eddie thing in Vegas. And um, Who's gonna know the cousin Eddie reference. Let's see. Let's see. Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie reference. Yeah. Somebody wants, um, somebody wants a TV show. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what about a reality show? Life with the good tears is... Ooh. No. I don't think... No. <laughs> <laughs> we, get to, we get to go bust in on Zach in his room. Uh, what? What? Griswold's what? Elm 75 gets it. See? I have so much to do. I have so yeah. much to do. You do? Really, though? Do you have so much to do? No. I don't think you do, but you're cute. Cousin Nitty. You're Cousin cute. Eddie. Everybody knows Cousin ah. Eddie. Cousin Eddie Lampoon. That's right. Okay. Um, let's go to questions. Uh, I like Peter Fossum. So, Paul, does Amy G ever wear her three rings around the house just to remind you? Yes. What was his name again? Eddie? Peter. Oh, Peter. I don't know. Eddie. I was thinking of Eddie. You're I was thinking of Cousin Eddie. What's in this green tea? What's in this? Yeah. Um, spike it with. I've never does she wear? It. She never. You never wear them around to like brag, but just to let him know. Tell him what name is on that ring, babe. Oh, on I all three it. of them. Paul says my name's on it, so if something happens to you, they're mine. Because it just says Gutierrez. It doesn't say Amy. There's no A. Like I don't have actual. I mean, it's my name too. Sure. Yeah. But Paul has... But I get one and a half of those three rings, so... If I leave you? <laughs> one and a half. One and a half. You're going to slice it down. It's one <laughs> for each kid. Solomon's baby. And then we didn't have a third kid, so it goes to me. So I, I get the third. We'll Your split it like Solomon's me. baby. That's some biblical <laughs> reference there, babe. Oh, that's going to be hard for me. Yeah. That's unfair. You're going into uncharted territory. <laughs> Paul... <laughs> Paul would always tease me because Paul was raised Catholic and I wasn't. And, you know, we, we grew up with religion, but I, I've never been crazy committed to it. We can get into that in another in our podcast or our TV show. Um, but, you know, Paul dips into the holy water before he walks into the church. And he was like, I don't, I don't think you should do it. You might burn you. <laughs> I thought that was really mean, Paul. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna burn me. The holy well, that, I mean, you mentioned yeah, I did. I was raised Catholic, so shocker. Uh, uh, Mexican American uh, Catholic who grew up rooting for the Dodgers, Lakers, USC, and the Raiders. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think it's any more stereotypical than that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that time you did put your wa your hand in there and it started boiling the holy water. I mean, that was different. <laughs> I never seen that. That is not true. That true. Is, that's not true. Do not believe what Paul says. Okay. Um, I like Matthew Henry wants to know, do you ever feel like Amy is interviewing you? Only in mock situations. Like if she has to go, actually it's the other way around, huh? I interview you. Yeah. I think I interrogate you. There... But that's just a I daily thing. Sure we're going to say like, no, she doesn't interview me. She interrogates me with the light. But it's not really, I mean, you're not really interrogating or interviewing. You're just kind of giving me like the honeydew list. I mean, and that's normal. When I'm trying to get to the bottom of something with you, though, I'm kind of like, hmm, and what about this? And how about that? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty aggressive, which would lean more towards interrogating. But no, I don't, 
I don't interview you. Somebody asked if we talk to each other in our broadcast voice. I make fun of your broadcast voice. You do, because when I come home and I start talking like this, you're right on top of me and you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Stop it. <laughs> Stop doing that. Yeah. Because Paul, when he's home, he's able to do some hits from home. You know, we switch yeah. up our bookcase behind us and there is a Dodger shelf and there's a giant shelf and that switches depending on who's on camera. Uh, <laughs> but I, She hides my Fernando bobblehead, guys. She hides the Fernando bobblehead. I lay him down like, like, like he's resting. Yes. Because I do love Fernando. I, and I've always admitted that I've been. I think I, I think it's so funny that people have issues that you like the Dodgers or or your fans have issues that I like the Giants. Like it's just so silly to me. I, uh, I that's what I love about this in this kind of format that I can say that I can't mm -hmm. say it anywhere else, you know. But it's like get over it. Like this is who I grew up liking. That's who he grew up liking. And I grew up liking some Dodgers too because. My grandmother loved the Dodgers. My father loved the Dodgers. My brother loved the Dodgers. Like it's about loving the game. It's not, you know. And I've got and I've got receipts too, babe. I've got receipts. I've Dodgers got game. pictures. I've got pictures yeah. of you. I, yeah, I've got I've got stuff that I think Giants fans' heads would explode. Do you think um, it, would it really explode? Why I do think you want to so. ruin? Why do you want to ruin? <laughs> I wouldn't. Paul? That's what I'm saying. It's not about you. It's about yeah. Fan comes from fanatic, and I get that. And we wouldn't have jobs without them. So no, love them. Not. Love them to death. I know. Did Did Paul Gunther deserve to? Oh, here's a serious question. Go serious. Did Paul Gunther deserve to get fired despite the Raiders' defense being short on talent? Ooh. Do you want uh, to define? Yeah, define deserve because it was time. There was definitely time. They had no answer whatsoever for the Colts. It was it was embarrassing. They had no answer. They gave up 44 points. Granted, seven of those were on a pick six and a point after. But they just had no answers, and it was time. Uh, I just I think the question spinning it forward is, is it too late? Because it probably should have happened earlier in the year. Um, and a lot of people are saying, I know there was a big story NFL Network went with, which, which was that the Raiders spent so much more money on offense. But – They've drafted a, a ton of guys on the defensive side of the ball. They've brought in guys, uh, high high profile free agents on the defensive side of the ball, and they just haven't panned out. So if they're not responding to his coaching, well then, you know who's going to go? The coach is going to go. So Paul's a good guy. I like him a lot. Um, we get confused because we call each other PG all the time, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's unfortunate, but it's a business. And I know that John Gruden had a hard time doing that because that's one of his best friends. And I couldn't imagine having to fire a best friend uh, and sending him on his way. And John tried to make, you know, brought some levity to it and said, you know what? I think in the long run, it's going to be better for Paul because he gets away from me for a while. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it's a tough situation, but you got to see how they respond on a short week. You got a uh, Raider, uh, Raider for Life 209. Let's have an old school PG Raider chat. So maybe we need to set that up. Like, okay. not right now. I'm not prepared. <laughs> I only, I only studied our life. We, yeah, but you know, you said it, and at some point in the near future, we'll get our guy Lincoln Kennedy on here. He's got his own radio show, and yeah, we're working on a project. Paul's writing, wait, Paul's writing a book, so let's plug this. Paul's uh, writing his uh, third book. Mm -hmm. Third book. Go ahead. Go. Yeah, so the first one was the Dodgers with Tommy Davis. He played in the 60s. Um, a lot of good Giants stories in there. Second one was 100 Things Raider Fans Should Know and Do Before They Die, uh, which is like 100 little mini stories. It's kind of like a Wikipedia entry on the Raiders, of different plays, different personalities, you know, obviously Al Davis, Mark Davis. But that book came out in 2014, and that was before Derek Carr was even on the team. That was before Jack Del Rio was hired. That was before Gruden came back. So... That needed to be updated. So in the, in the time that I was pitching the publisher, Triumph Publishing, about, you know, let's re-up this for the Vegas move and introduce the Vegas fan base to it, they said, well, we're actually on to a new series here called If These Walls Could Talk, and it sounds a little more scandalous than it really is. But it's cool to, to talk to, to Lincoln, and, and they do it from a different perspective because they, they pair a reporter who's covered the team for a while with either a former player or a radio personality that covers them. And... Lincoln's done both. Lincoln played with the team, with the Raiders from 96 to 03. He was on the team for the tuck rule for the Super Bowl when they got blown out by John Gruden. And he's been on the radio since 2013 covering the team as well. So he's seen it from both, you know, both sides of the ball. And I've covered this team in one way or another. 
uh, in Oakland and in Vegas since 2005, even though my fandom of the Raiders goes back to when they moved to L.A. in 82. And I, when I was at the Barstow Desert Dispatch in junior college, I go cover Raider games. There. So I've been covering Raider games since 1988, really. Um, and to be able to do that, we're trying, we're putting this thing. Yeah. We're trying to put all these things together. Um, and it's a cool project to work on. Um, it's, it, you know, it's always kind of hanging over your head a little bit, but it should be out next, uh, next fall. So this is coming from, uh, by Breda, by Breda, I guess. By Brady. By, Brady. by Brady. Oh, that's my guy, Brady. He covers, see, he's trying to be funny. What he wants me to do. Yeah, go. I'm sorry. Answer his question. No, it's okay. So this is Paul, how is the Madden Cruiser or whatever it is you're living in on the road? What does Amy think of it? And this is like the saddest part of 2020, you guys. So, you know, given the situation with the Raiders moving, Paul had to relocate to Las Vegas. And we actually kind of, this is so weird to say, honey, that we left out a little bit with COVID. I mean, if we're going to find a glasses half full situation with COVID, we got to have Paul home a little bit longer before he had to go. And then with that, he's been able to come home while the Raiders were on the road because he doesn't have to travel. But he has an RV down in Las Vegas, courtesy of his mom and dad. Thank you, Henry and Lorraine. We love you so yep. much. <laughs> and I have not been able to see it. So when he left, I was in the middle of a giant season and we were going to go down for Thanksgiving. Couldn't do it because of COVID and the rising cases and the ask to not travel. And I was supposed to go on Tuesday. I was supposed to go yesterday to go see him and finally see the RV and couldn't because of the shutdown. And we just felt like not the most responsible thing to do right now with what was going on. So Paul, or who was it? No. Who was, who said that? Brady. Brady. If you're trying to be funny. Yeah. Well, I hope I put you in your. <laughs> no, what, what Brady wants. Yeah. Well, Brady wants to do. Brady's our guy that covers the Seahawks. And guess where Brady lives? Brady lives on a boat on Lake Washington. So that's, yeah, he wants me to mention that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Edie and Robin probably roll up on their boat. But no, he lives on a on a houseboat on Lake Washington. So Brady, Brady's Brady got me beat in that aspect. Yeah, that's what, yeah. But, you know, it's working. <laughs> you know what? You do what you have to to make it work. So I know we got to kind of wrap this up. We were only supposed to go half an hour, honey. We've already got 45 minutes. But I Ooh, Willie's, so. Willie's going to be mad at you. It's okay. I know. Sorry, Willie. Um, so this is from, guess who this is? Burger lover mother. Oh, Kendall. This is great. What opponent of Muhammad Ali inspired the screenplay for Rocky? Chuck Wepner. Wow. Did you I wrote about... Did you I see wrote, that question earlier today and look it up? No, no. I wrote oh. Catching Up with Chuck Wepner for uh, Sports Illustrated when I worked at Sports Illustrated. No, you didn't. No. Yeah. I saw that one. That's the one we should have framed. What did I have framed? McGuire? Randy Jones. But McGuire was on that, though, right? McGuire was on the cover, but it was Randy Jones, the pitcher from the Padres, that you framed. I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I Chuck Wepner, the Chuck Bayonne framed. Bleeder. The Bayonne Bleeder. Well, I have to admit, Kendall, I had to look it up because I was like, oh, Rocky Marciano or whoever <laughs> talks about in the movie. Because like, I'm the biggest Rocky fan, right? And then I was like, maybe I'm not legit because I don't actually know that. So I looked it up. And I didn't realize that Chuck sued Sly mm -hmm. and got some payola. Yeah. But they're still friends. So I still like... That I don't know about. I know there was no, a movie. There was a movie on Chuck Wepner recently. Yeah. There is a new movie on Chuck. And it's uh, it's our guy from um, The Voice, Leif. Leif Schreiber. I think. Does he play him? No, I think it's John Voight. I think. Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't know that one. I'll just stay with Chuck Webner. I got you. I got you on that one. Yeah. There's a movie about him and it's Lee Schreiber with Natalie Lee Schreiber. Hmm. His former partner. I forget. Who okay. Is. You guys know, they know all about this stuff. They answer it for me. I love it. Um, yeah. So I didn't realize that. I did not know that you did a catching up with. Back in 98, I think. Chuck. 97, 98. Chuck Webner. Yeah. The Bayonne bleeder. Cause he bled all over the place. Yeah. But he was, a, he was a fighter. Like he, he kept coming at you like Rocky, like my guy. Mm -hmm. It's on my bucket list to meet Sylvester Stallone. Paul knows this. Who's on your bucket list to meet? 
Well, I've already met you. Mm-hmm. Do you, should I so... do something? I have some. I have one. Oh, Grace knows okay. one. Okay, Grace. J-Lo. Sure. I saw J-Lo. I saw J-Lo at the All-Star Game with A-Rod. Um, Thelma Hayek. Yes. Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. <laughs> You're so quiet. Um, and every female yeah. actress on The Mandalorian right now, because they can all fight. Every actress on The Mandalorian. There's well, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, Ming Na Wen. You want to meet mm. her? Um, and the latest, I can't. What's the character's name with the horns? You want to, Rosario Dawson? You definitely mm -hmm. want to meet her. They can all fight. They're like you. They can all fight. Thank you, Dad. Don't start the fight. <laughs> we'll start the fight, but you finish the fight. Mm -hmm. You finish the fight, yeah. yeah. Don't you start none, won't be none. Did you have another person on your list that you need to meet? I think that's it. I'm sure there's more. I like to meet your friends. I mean, like my guy, El, El Gallo Negro, the baddest vato from the Holy Side. I know. Benjamin like, Brad. My guys, you love the guys that I get to meet, too. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Benjamin Carlos Brad. Santana. Steve Perry. Uh, Steve Perry. Those are all your guys. I like to meet those guys. They'd like you. <laughs> I think they'd like you. You know, I asked Ben Brad to be on the show. He's busy. It didn't happen. I asked Steve <laughs> Perry too. It didn't happen. But when I asked you, you came on. So there you go. What am I gonna do? I'm just supposed to go meet Willie for dinner, and oh, he was sorry, made up. He made res he made reservations for you too. He I thought you were gonna be here. Have you not told him yet? No, he he knows. Oh, okay. Well, tell him I'm sorry. Um, All right. But there's there's always wine that he can be drinking in my absence at Scout and Cellar. Did you see what I was drinking tonight? Did you see before I got on? How the puppy, drink? right? It's the puppy. The puppy. Is it yeah, a little like cool. next door? It's uh, yeah, but like your mom said, it's in reverse. Oh God. Amy, <laughs> you need to figure that out. <laughs> I don't know how to switch it. I can't switch it. Um, okay, so should we do it again? Yeah. Okay. Podcast, TV show. We got big plans. We got to figure it out. We'll do a script. Let's do a script when you come home. Okay. But an old school Raiders one would be super fun. We should have Mark Davis on, and you and I mm. should do it from here with him on Instagram Live. Do you think he would do it? I don't know. I don't know if he I would. Ask him. Maybe if you asked him. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't talked to him for a few weeks, so I got to check in with him actually. No, so. you're not. You guys are Three okay. weeks to go in the yeah. season. You got this. Mom says, need a sponsor. Come on, Mom. That's it. Yeah. Get on that. Chop, chop. One to one communication. Sponsored by one to one. Sponsored by one to one communication. One to one communications. They're rolling in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And 140 okay. and more. Love you, too. More anymore. Okay. Um, I guess next time we should probably be more controversial and not say, like, we love each other and stuff, or we won't keep having followers. No, it's just fun. I know. I have fun. And anybody, yeah, people taking shots. Who's taking shots? What'd they say? I don't know. That person tried to say I didn't know where the Chargers came from. You know. Ooh. Oh, you're still at <laughs> <laughs> You should probably let that go. Or you I should get Shanna. Oh, you should get Shanna on. on. I'll put your three rings. rings punch them for you. You should. Time. And Shanna could, should offer some old school Raider talk. That would be fun. Serious old, we could get Chet on. Chet would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Robin wants a podcast too. I love all these people with no funding for us. <laughs> we should have a podcast. You're awesome. Robin's got to have her, her tiara though. And then if she could au auction that off. Yes. Get the wave. Yes. We love Robin. Um, well, if anybody has, uh, Shanna said, yay, me. Yes, we want Shanna to talk <laughs> uh, about dog cookies and the Raiders. Shanna's dad was a coach, long time for the Raiders. So we've got connections. We just need to find a sponsor for a podcast. If anybody has great ideas, let us know. And if you have questions for our next Instagram live session, whenever that's going to be, or maybe Paul and I can interview somebody together from home over the holiday, that'd be kind of fun. Uh, let us know. We're, we're open to ideas of 2020. Open for business. And open. We're open for business. I love it.
love it. Yeah. Oh, Sheila Bell says she'll Venmo us. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they get you. Don't Venmo. That's how they get you. Haven't you guys seen the show? Handmaid's Tale. Yes. That's how they get you. Yeah. I know. Scout and Seller should sponsor it, Sheila. You're right, but they're not going to. It's not going to And Kim Wong gets credit. Hey, Kim, you K-Dub in the house. Thanks, K-Dub, K-Dub in the house. The call. Yeah. All right. Mm, I love you. And I love you, Jim. put lipstick on for you. Bye. Bye. See ya. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs>